morning San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Tuesday. It is September 22nd, 39 days to Halloween. That's right. Thanks for joining us. And like a lot of things this year, Halloween is going to look a lot different. That's right. We've got a new survey we want to pass along to you. Halloween related. Nearly a quarter of Americans, 23% saying they still plan to participate in trick or treating this year. And that's compared to 29% last year, so that's quite a bit, according to a survey from the National Retail Federation. Yeah, that's despite a number of cities canceling festive activities like parades and street fairs amid the pandemic. And with the second wave of COVID-19 infections predicted to surge this fall, cities like Springfield, Massachusetts, and downtown West Chicago are canceling trick-or-treating altogether. And others like Los Angeles County advised against it and after walking back an original September 8th ban on trick-or-treating. And with uh, over a month to go, we're going to continue to hear more about how municipalities are going to be handling trick-or-treating. Uh, also this year, another interesting little tidbit, uh, Americans will be buying fewer sweets this year. That's right. Just 35% of Americans surveyed recently in a separate report said they would put out candy for trick-or-treaters. That was down 14% from last year. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is interesting to me, going back to that original stat, Steph, that 23% uh, said they still plan to do trick-or-treating this year compared to only 29% last year. You'd think it'd be almost a steeper decline right, it's just because a, of the pandemic. There's only a small difference. Mm -hmm. I guess a lot of people still want to continue the tradition. Sounds yeah. like it. We've still received no official guidance mm -hmm. for San Antonio regarding uh, this year's trick or, tr trick or treating. Yeah, not, not an official word, uh, but some facilities are opening like we announced earlier today. But uh, yeah, some, this, will, this will be a different Halloween, at least for us. I mean, we're going to definitely do the costumes, but you know, maybe we'll have, um, I think one of my friends suggested uh, instead of an egg hunt, mm -hmm. like a candy hunt. You know, just to keep it fun. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll keep it posted as uh, we move forward. Right now, here's today's 9 at 9. Starting today, basketball courts, skate parks, playgrounds, and fitness stations at city parks in San Antonio are open. There is also no longer a 10-person limit. Reservations for outdoor park amenities, like pavilions, are now available. Nearly 11 million people are under flash flood watches across Texas and Louisiana as Tropical Storm Beta moves in. The season's 23rd named storm is expected to linger along the coast for two days, dumping up to six inches of rain. The medical examiner's office has released the name of an inmate who died in the Bear County Jail last night. According to the sheriff's office, 89-year-old George Holland was breathing but unresponsive. Officials believe he had a medical episode due to a pre-existing condition. Holland was booked earlier this month on a murder charge. Police in Louisville, Kentucky have declared a state of emergency as the department prepares for a decision to be handed down in the state's investigation into Breonna Taylor's shooting death. Federal buildings and other downtown businesses are already boarded up and all officers are standing by. A mother is speaking out about the disappearance of her 17-year-old son, Sebastian Vasquez Carpio. Since his disappearance on Friday, his family, friends, and the loved ones have been searching for him. Whoever did this to my son, I can tell you that I am not going to rest until I find justice for my son. Late Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg will lie in state at the U.S. Capitol and will be the first woman to receive that honor. Her casket will be in the Statuary Hall of the U.S. Capitol Building on Friday. KSET will hold a political forum with the candidates for Bear County Commissioner Precinct 3 today. Republican Trish DeBerry and Democrat Christine Hortick will participate in a debate starting at 7.30 this evening. It will be live streamed on KSET.com. Ellen DeGeneres issued an apology on air after several months of allegations that her show fostered a toxic workplace. Reports surfaced this summer after former employees cited workplace misconduct, harassment, and racism. High-speed rail could soon be coming to Texas. The Texas Tribune reports that the Federal Railroad Administration approved funding for a line between Houston and Dallas. With the funding, Texas Central Railroad says a project can begin in 2021. Now we need to work on the rest of that triangle. If Dallas is going to connect to Houston, then connect San Antonio and Austin to Dallas. Yeah, yeah we need to be included as well. <laughs> we can hope. <laughs> and don't forget uh, much more on transportation future here in San Antonio. And coming up in this week's KSAT Explains, part two, all about mass transit.
Very good. And then also, it is officially fall. Officially, as of 8.30. Yeah. We are into fall. And it felt pretty good yesterday, right? We had the cloud cover. We had a little bit of rain. Beta brought us some rain yesterday. It's still out there, by the way. Winds at 40 miles per hour. Still a tropical storm. This thing's going to weaken today, but not before bringing some pretty heavy rain off to our east. Places like Houston, there is a ton of rain there this morning. A ton of flooding going on, in fact. Let's take a look at the radar and satellite. You can still see the spin there right around Victoria. That is Tropical Storm Beta. It is still trying to throw a few showers in our direction, but as you just saw there on live cam, we're also seeing a little bit of sun. So clearing is going to occur basically west to east today as Beta sort of drifts and then eventually moves out to the north and east. There's a little closer look at some of the rain right now. Places like Howitzville and Gonzales still getting some decent downpours, some tropical downpours from this system, but not much here in San Antonio right now. 68 degrees in Boulevardi, 72, New Braunfels, 72, Stenson, 72, and Divine forecast calls for some mostly cloudy skies, a few showers, mainly east. This is uh, around noontime and then by the afternoon, probably partly cloudy to mostly cloudy skies. Temperatures will be back up around 80 with some breezy winds. Uh, we may be in fall, guys, but the temperatures really crank up after today. We're going to talk more about that forecast here in just a few minutes. Thank you, Justin. Taking a look out at Transguide, there's 1604 at Bandera. And we have a note from Officer Marcus Trujillo talking about southbound 410 at WW White Road. There's a truck on its side and there is debris on the road. So watch out for that when you hit the road. Big slowdowns down there in that part of southbound Loop 410. And the future of the Alamo Cenotaph will be determined today. That's right. The Texas Historical Commission is voting right now on Zoom. The Cenotaph, an empty tomb honoring Alamo's defenders downtown. It's been the focal point of the overhaul plan for Alamo Plaza. Now, current plans would move it several hundred feet to the south of its current location. However, opponents of the master plan say it moves the memorial too far from the Alamo itself. You can stream the meeting right now on ksat.com. Today is National Voter Registration Day. To help celebrate, the Pearl is partnering with the League of Women Voters to host a drive-up voter registration. That's happening today from 5.30 until 7.30 p.m. in the parking lot under 281. That's near Bike World. You can enter from Avenue A, opposite of the Pearl Stable. San Antonio police need your help finding the person who they say robbed a man back in mid-August. Officers say it all happened at the zip-in car wash in the 400 block of Del Mar. Police say the suspect on your screen demanded a man in his 50s give him his vehicle. The man complied with the demands and the suspect fled away in the victim's vehicle. Now, if you recognize the suspect, you are asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. You will be eligible for up to a $5,000 reward if there is an arrest that's made. Well, in your morning headlines, more pictures of damage done by Beta on the Texas coast and riding horseback down a highway to get some attention. And another whale tell. This one is true. And wait till you hear the whale's possible attackers. David Sears is here. Good, Good morning. Morning, Mr. Sears. Not sure another animal would want to attack a whale, but apparently it does happen. Okay. So we'll have that for you in just a second. But first, you're looking at more of the damage done by Tropical Storm Beta. Never got to hurricane strength, but may not be able to tell by some of the damage left behind. That was the 61st Street Pier in Galveston, and it's now part of its beach down the coast. There was a ton of rain, a lot of flooding. Beta made landfall last evening, as Justin has been talking about this morning. The scene is being played out along the east coast of Texas and into the Houston area. The storm not moving very fast. Justin with a lot more coming up in just a few more minutes. Here's some more amazing pictures thanks to the work of Mother Nature. That is a smoke NATO coming right at you because you're in the car with a driver just north of Los Angeles in the middle of the Bobcat fire. When they caught this on camera, the wind's so wild, a smoke NATO forms in the middle of the fire and you can see it pass by the car and all that debris is blowing around. The Bobcat fire has now burned 106,000 acres. Some 85 structures have been damaged or destroyed and about 4,000 people have had to evacuate the area. Staying in California, not sure this had anything to do with the fires, but a horse had to be rescued by helicopter. The horse fell down a 60 foot ravine. They tried to walk the horse back out, but it was just too steep. So they called in air support. She's okay this morning. And yes, that is a man riding a horse down the highway in Illinois. He calls himself the Dreadhead Cowboy and he and his mount were out to get some attention. His name is Adams Hollinsworth and his message is Kids Lives Matter. 
He rode down the highway for seven miles with a motorcycle escort and other activists right on his tail, literally and figuratively. Hollinsworth was galloping along about 50 miles an hour at one time on the highway before he finally stopped and he was arrested, but without incident. Kids lives matter. Until kids lives matter, until we understand kids lives matter, nothing else matter. Yeah, here's a little bit of bad news. It appears from these photos that the horse was injured a little and bleeding. The horse was taken to Chicago's animal care and control and looked pretty good. You can see here and say, yeah, he's getting some hay, so she's happy. Hollisworth is facing some charges, but he got what he wanted. Attention for kids' lives matter. And finally, sounds like a whale of a tail, but it's true. This happening in Australia. This is a whale apparently lost its way on its migration trip and ended up swimming in this river. The problem, that river is full of crocodiles. There were actually three whales at first, but two made it back out to sea. This one still lost. The whale lost for about two weeks, but finally figured out the path away from danger and back out to the ocean, made it unscathed. Well, that's good. Can you imagine <laughs> crocodiles attacking a big whale? I guess. I, I think he got the hint. He was in the wrong place at the wrong time. <laughs> mm-hmm. Had to get the fluke out of there. Yeah. Uh. Like Whales, <laughs> flukes. Fluke. Okay. All right. Thank you, David. <laughs> right now, 909, 72 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. A popular war film is getting a full 4K release. Details on when you can start streaming it at home. A business owner in California had to get creative in order to stay afloat during the pandemic. His new idea and how it's attracted new customers. Good morning, I'm Max Massey. We are here at the Soto, one of the newest and most technologically advanced buildings here in San Antonio. I'm gonna explain what this wood is for and why it makes it so special. And taking a look at stocks, the Dow is down two points right now. Good morning and welcome back. 913 San Antonio continues to grow outward and upward. You may have noticed a new building uh, just north of downtown on Broadway. It's a modern looking building with a lot of glass and wood timber to be exact. It's called the Soto and that's where Max Massey joins us live. Now, Max, what makes this new building so special? Well, guys, you talked about it, the wood, the timber right here. It looks good. It adds that modern look, but it also adds a really high tech importance. We're John, joined here with John from Hicks and Property. So, John, tell us about this, this timber. Why is it so important? Well, Thank you, Max. First of all, as you mentioned, it's a beautiful material, so we can offer a look that nobody else in town can. But secondly, and maybe more importantly, is building with timber is highly environmentally sustainable. And what I mean by that is other buildings are built with either steel or concrete. The production of those two materials produces about 12% of the carbon emissions in the United States each year. We, however, were building with young farm-raised trees, and as you learned in school, when those trees grow, they're breathing carbon dioxide out of the air. When we build with those trees, we're then storing that carbon in our building, so our structure actually has a negative carbon footprint. So it can help the air quality of San Antonio. Air quality in San Antonio, air quality throughout the world. And speaking of air quality, you guys built this before the pandemic hit, obviously, but you, we focused on this back in March. The air quality here is special. It is, and I wanna show you real quickly how we're different than the other buildings that have been built over the last 100 years. In a traditional building, cold air is being introduced or dumped into the building from the ceiling. So as hot air rises, that cold air is being forced through it. It causes a lot of mixing or dirty air. We are different in that our air is coming from below the floor. And what that means is each occupant in our building will have their own diffuser. It's an area where they get their own fresh air at their desk. And so what happens is each occupant gets that fresh air and that column of clean fresh air is then pushing that dirty air up, much less mixing much healthier building. And speaking of the, the cleanest air, I'm not sure how much time we have left, but I'd love to show off sure. kind of the air filtration system that you guys are telling us, high, t high grade, top tier in the market. It is. We have what's called a MERV 13 filter. Very few buildings in San Antonio have these, 
you can see it's a thick filter. It's essentially a blanket. Think of it as the difference between wearing a cheap face mask or an N95 face mask. All that air is going through that filter before it comes back to the occupants. Fantastic, John. All right, so that was kind of the specifics here. We talked about the timber. We talked about the top tier air quality. But this building could be the start of something special here on Broadway. We're going to explain. We'll be back at 930. Guys. Thank, Thank you, Max. Thank you, Max. <laughs> Well, like thousands of other businesses, Zotto's Bowling and Beyond in Santa Barbara County, California, had to stop indoors operations because of the pandemic. But the owner, Samuel Walters, had to think fast to keep his business afloat. He decided to move TV screens outside on its new turf patio, introducing a new outdoor arcade. It's a place for customers to spend time with family, watch football, and play a few games. Walters says families enjoy the safe outdoor environment. You can still feel comfortable having the kids go out and play all within, you know, eyesight away. Although the bowling alley may not reopen anytime soon, Zotos has reinvented itself to push through the pandemic. Walter says it's a great feeling to see people come in and have a sense of normalcy and do something fun. 917 right now, and uh, we were joking about it in the newsroom before the newscast. Happy fall, y'all. <laughs> it's officially here. Yeah, as of 830, right? It has arrived. Uh, yes, we typically don't feel it around here for a while longer, but technically, yes, fall is here. Uh, it happened at 830 a.m. this morning. Take a look at uh, what we're dealing with today. It's the autumnal equinox, and uh, it's usually every year, September 22nd, 23rd. Uh, the reason we see our seasons, of course, is because the Earth is tilted at 23.5 degrees, the axis is. And at the moment, we're neither tilted towards the sun or away from the sun, so you get equal amount of daylight and darkness at all latitudes. And uh, next, we'll uh, shoot for uh, the winter solstice. That'll be next in line. Well, we got some time before that happens. Okay, live radar shows we got showers uh, still hanging on. LaGrange down to Gonzales. Howitzville also seeing some showers this morning. Of course, this is what's left over from Tropical Storm Beta. Uh, also rain up around College Station. Not seeing much here in San Antonio. We are seeing some clouds, but the rain pretty much has gone away. There's a few very light showers up there just west of Austin. Uh, the heavy stuff has been around Houston. Still some flash flood warnings here. Very heavy rain continues. Uh, they actually closed schools there uh, across parts of Houston because of the flooding. And that's probably going to be around most of the day. So if you're heading east on I-10, keep that in mind. It's not a good situation there uh, as they're continuing to see some pretty heavy tropical rains. At last check, one of the highest tolls was around 10 inches. That was in southwest Houston, but the numbers are getting even higher than that. Uh, here's a look at some of the numbers over the last 24 hours. Oh, El Campo 5.42, Howitzville 2.67, one of the bigger numbers in our viewing area. We'll go west a little bit. The airport about six tenths of an inch. New Braunfels about four tenths of an inch. Yoakum 1.23, Goliad nearly, nearly an inch. Unfortunately, if you were west of I-35, not a lot of rain uh, yesterday or even today from uh, this tropical system. Uh, you see the cloud cover. There have been some breaks here around Bear County. We'll see some breaks today, probably more cloud cover than sun. And then by tomorrow afternoon, the sun will really start to pop out. We'll see a lot of sun going into the weekend. You can still see the swirl of beta very nicely. Winds right now at 40 miles per hour, gusting to 50. It's moving northwest at about 3, so it's crawling here. It's sort of stalled out a little bit, but it will get picked up and pushed out to the north and east. Uh, probably tomorrow, by tomorrow afternoon, it's starting to scoot out of here. And it will take a lot of the rain with it. Here's what our future cast looks like. Again, partly cloudy skies, mostly cloudy to partly cloudy this afternoon. And then tomorrow we should start off with some cloud cover, may linger for a while. And then eventually late in the day, those clouds will clear out. And then by the time we get into Thursday, we're talking sunny skies. Forecast for today, 30% chance, mainly off to the east. Temperatures should be up around 80 with some breezy winds out of the north and east. Right now, 72. And we have a north northwesterly wind at 14 gusting to 25, so it's it's breezy at the moment. 64 Bernie stays, 67 in Comfort, 69 Kerrville, 68 right now in Bandera, 71 in Gonzales, 74 Del Rio, 75 right now in Carrizo Springs. Long term here, high pressure builds in out west. Here's another little trough that tries to develop over Texas as we get into the weekend. 
but there's just no moisture to work with. Doesn't look like we'll get any rain out of it. So the forecast is generally dry as we go forward. 84 Wednesday, 87 Thursday, 90 on Friday and sunny. And we're looking at low 90s this weekend and even into next week. Guys, thank you, Justin. 921, 72 degrees. And coming up next, taking a look at a revamped classic film. Details on when you can start streaming Full Metal Jacket in 4K. And welcome back. It's 924. Stanley Kubrick's iconic Vietnam War film Full Metal Jacket is getting a full 4K release. Rick Damagella has the latest in Hollywood. Paris Island, South Carolina, the United States Marine Corps Recruit Depot, an eight-week college for the phony tough and the crazy brave. Stanley Kubrick's Vietnam War epic Full Metal Jacket gets a visual promotion with the release of a 4K Ultra HD edition. Joker. Sir, yes, sir. 4212, basic military journalism. You think you're Mickey Spillane? Sir, I wrote for my high school newspaper, sir. Matthew Modine was given the rare opportunity by Kubrick to be allowed to photograph the production as part of his role, which was later published as a book and interactive app. That was unheard of for anybody to be allowed to take photographs on his set. So um, I used that medium format camera that I loved so much, the Rolleiflex, and because I was playing a journalist, I kept a diary, <clears throat> a personal diary about what was happening in my life, and then a diary of what was uh, uh, taking place on the set. I need help. I'm trying to help you, Leonard. When you're young, you don't think about it, but uh, as we get older, it's wonderful to be uh, a part of something that stands the test of time. I think I can say that's true of most of uh, Stanley Kubrick's projects, that they're not um, films that are stuck in a, in a particular moment of time, and that's, that's a testament to his genius. What is that you've got written on your helmet? Born to kill, sir. You were born to kill on your helmet and you wear a peace button. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. The 4K Ultra HD edition of Full Metal Jacket available today on Blu-ray and digital. And there's a lot more ahead on GMSA at 9. The options you have when it comes to paying student loans during the pandemic. Our Ivan Herrera will break down in this week's Money is Personal segment. And as we already chatted about it briefly, first day of fall, there's a deep, de we have details rather on a cool website lets you track when the fall leaves reach their peak color in places where the leaves actually change a bit. And taking a deep dive into the history of Tejano, our Erica Hernandez will join us for a live debrief. That's next on GMSA at 9. And Transcat, as we go to break, we don't see it on the cameras here, but again, be advised there was a major incident truck on its side, debris in the road, southbound 410 at WW White. And welcome back. It's 930 and at 9 a.m. We brought you an inside look at one of the newest and most high tech buildings in San Antonio. Max Massey joins us live from the Soto over on Broadway. Max, you could say this could be the first piece of the future in that part of the uh, city. That's right. Yeah, at 9 a.m. We talked about the timber. We talked about why that is so important here at the Soto. But now we are on the balcony, one of the best balconies in San Antonio, overlooking Broadway. And John, you say that there are big plans here on Broadway. What is the plan for the next five, ten years? Well, Max, first of all, on top of this just being the best view of the, the Fiesta parades in the city, we do have big plans. We own about eight and a half acres in this district. And so we imagine that over the next seven to 10 years, we will be developing this into a big urban community, a big urban neighborhood. And I think it starts with this. Over the last seven or eight years, nearly 3,000 apartment units have been built in the area, putting people on the ground nights and weekends. But with the Soto opening up and with CPS moving their headquarters to the building behind us, we now have people in the neighborhood Monday through Friday, nine to five. That creates the environment where we can start to develop bars, restaurants, more office, more residential, a real urban neighborhood. Now we have seen apartment buildings pop up here on Broadway over the last five years, but you guys are also saying that the bottom floor here at the Soto is gonna be retail. That's right. So we have space for a restaurant on the ground floor. We also have space for a coffee shop and flex space, I'd call it, so that if someone wants to move in as office, we can accommodate that. On the other hand, if they want, uh, or if a, a fitness center wants to move in, we could accommodate that as well. So this could be the future entertainment hub of San Antonio. That's the way we see it. 
All right, John, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Max. So there you have it, guys. Big plans in the works right now and big plans over the works in the next decade. Guys? Thank you, Max. It is a very cool view there on Broadway. And speaking of views, let's all take a view outside with live cam on the first day of fall 2020. What else could happen in 2020, right, Justin? Oh, don't ask. <laughs> don't that ask. Just, no. <laughs> Uh, we're, we're still not even done with hurricane season yet. Who knows? Let's, let's hope it quiets down a little bit. Uh, let's take a look at the pollen count for today. Uh, it is fall now officially, and our fall allergens are in full swing. Molds at moderate 750, ragweed moderate 160, fall elm low at 20. Uh, there's a look at the Doppler radar. We've still got beta spinning out there. Still a few light showers in our direction, but for the most part, we're dry here in San Antonio. you got to go out to, uh, towards Gonzales and Howitzville before you run into any rain. And then you've got some very heavy rain and flash flood warnings underway around the Houston area this morning as the heavy rain continues there. For us, a cloud coverage is trying to break up a little bit. Although I still think we'll see quite a bit uh, of clouds through the day today. 69 Boulevard, 72 New Braunfels, 73 right now. It's tense and pretty comfortable out there. It's not going to be overly hot today, but we will get up to near 80 with uh, partly cloudy skies by this evening. And clearing skies as we get later into this week, it's going to get downright hot by the weekend. We've got to look ahead to that forecast in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. As I glance across the studio, I still see major slowdowns. Uh, southbound 410 at WW White due to a major accident. We have a truck on the side. Cleanup is taking quite a while. We don't see it on Transguide right now uh, as we continue to scan around the city at various other cameras. Look like we had a stalled vehicle, one of those other cameras. But again, southbound 410, WW White, avoid the area. Very heavy traffic still backing up in that part of town. Well, earlier today on the early edition of GMSA, we showed you a story about Tejano history and a website that gives you a deep dive into the pioneers who first settled in the Lone Star State. Here's a quick look. Before uh, the men and women from the American East come here or the Euro colonists come here, and we're talking about families uh, with names like Rodriguez and Menchaca and uh, Cruz and Vargas and A to Z. Uh, and they were the pioneers. Texas Tejano has hosted exhibits across the state and inside the state capitol, produced historical documentaries, published books, and put on plays, all to continue educating the public all about Tejano history. Erica Hernandez joining us live from home with more about the website. Good morning, Erica. Good morning. Hey, guys. Good morning. Hey, first question this morning. Uh, you talked about how Texas began around 1690. How important of a role did San Antonio play in Tejano history? San Antonio has a really big role in all this. It was pretty much the center of everything, geographically, commercially, militarily, religiously. I mean, we used to call it, we call ourselves the military city now, but it was also mil a lot of military things going on in the city then as well as religiously. You see like San Fernando Cathedral and the missions, which are some of the first churches and um, religious facilities here in the state. So San Antonio was central to a lot of things in Tejano history and at one point was even the capital of Texas. TexasTejano.com. How do they uh, showcase all of this history there? So it's broken down fairly well on the website. You can see um, um, important figures like the Hano pioneers or those who battled, who fought in the Alamo or religious figures. And then it breaks it down to the, kind of like the Hano moments of different um, battles and different points in history to even locations like the importance of the Medina River to this area and some of the first ranchers and settlers and families. Um, so it's all broken down and it's also really good educationally. Um, it, it provides different types of documents and a look at artifacts. Over 2,000 artifacts are archived here on this website that you can get a closer look at. And for people who haven't had a chance to take a look, tell us why it's so important. I think it's really important. I think even for like myself, I didn't know a lot of this history. Um, I think we're taught often in school just, you know, from around the time of the Texas Revolution, but not anything before that. When you, there was a lot going on before that. If you look back all the way to 1600s, there was a lot going on. And um, the Hanos had such a key role into this, into uh, Texas history. So a lot of times it's kind of untold to us. Even myself looking into this website, I kind of got into a rabbit hole and started finding names 
um, like Perez and Hernandez, who are, are family. And I, it makes me wonder if those are my own ancestors. So I think this is really important information, educational information that's also there for teachers and students to um, to look mm-hmm. into. And it's all there for you. They produce, Texas Tejano has produced documentaries, they've produced plays, they have uh, published books. So it, it's really fascinating to get into this and see all this. Well, and perfect timing too. I mean, here we are still in the midst of a, a major pandemic. And there, right there at the top of the website, I mean, there are a ton of resources available to, to visitors. Oh, yeah. What's the name of the website again? It's just texastejano.com. And um, you could also sign up for their newsletters as they're constantly still doing research because it's, it's never ending and there's always something new that they find. What is something else that you find interesting about uh, your research into this website and, and what they're offering to users? I think just looking that just so many people that were involved in in this way in putting this together i mean a lot of the universities as long with rudy rodriguez who has kind of spearheaded this um he started this just because he was doing kind of an ancestry of his own family and he started realizing just how far back i think that's what was kind of eye-opening to me is just how far back texas Um, was created and some of those first pioneer families that were a part of it had common names that that we're all used to like Rodriguez and Hernandez and Perez and it's it's really fascinating stuff. It sounds like it was kind of a personal labor of love and became so much more now we can all enjoy. Now it grew and I'm sure uh, there's going to be much more information added you know as the years you know down the line and we'll probably learn a lot more from this website so thank you for bringing it to our attention. All right Erica Hernandez live from home. Thank you Erica. Good chatting with you. Well the ongoing pandemic has forced many people to restructure finances amid job losses making it harder to pay down student debt. Our Ivan Herrera explains what options federal student loan borrowers have in this week's Money It's Personal. If you lost your source of income or had reduced income because of the ongoing coronavirus pandemic, making payments on your federal student loans may be near impossible. The CARES Act gives federal student loan borrowers some relief when it comes to making payments. And most recently, the president extended the September 30th end date to December 31st. So what does that mean for you, the borrower? The Federal Trade Commission says if you have qualifying federal student loans, you are not obligated to make a payment until after December 31st. The U.S. Department of Education has automatically placed those loans into what's called administrative forbearance. If you have auto pay, check to see if any payments have been processed since March 13th, 2020. You may be able to get a refund if those payments went through. The interest rate on those loans has also dropped to 0% until December 31st, meaning you can still make payments and pay off your debt even faster if you have the money available. If your loans are in default, the U.S. Department of Education has stopped making collections calls and sending billing statements until the end of the year as well. The FTC says you don't need to do anything to enroll in this relief program, but you must make sure your federal student loan is included. Contact your federal loan servicer or visit studentaid.gov to find out if your loans are included. For this week's Money It's Personal, I'm Ivan Herrera, KSAT 12 News. And we have a link to those tips on our website, kset.com, and other stories in this series, just visit the website, kset.com forward slash MIP. 940, 72 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. And after the break, a look at the new emojis coming to smartphone users when the new update is expected to be released. 943 in Morning Consumer News, websites making it easier to find fall foliage. And a Korean band has a new venue for their video. Our David Sears is back. Hello. So first off, at 8.30 this morning, I'm sitting at my desk and Justin is sitting at his desk and he turns to me and he goes, congratulations. <laughs> and you <laughs> said, why? I said, what? He goes, it's fall. It's fall. We made it to fall. And right you, on the dot at 8.30. And you asked if we needed to stand brooms up or something? Yeah, is that my balcony <laughs> brooms? <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, something I didn't, happens. We all started clapping. Guy, I get that. But, but anyway, we are into fall. So <laughs> yes, here we, and if you stand here this vent, it feels a little like fall. Oh, it it nice. does. Yeah. Yep. So welcome to fall does sort of feel like it. A lot of people enjoy this time of year because of the fall colors we see when leaves start to change. If you are looking for the perfect spot to see it all happen, several new websites track when the fall leaves reach their peak color change. For instance, the National Park Service has a site that tracks the changes in the Smoky Mountains. 
It tracks the changes in the upper and the lower elevations because obviously they're different. This is a New England.com website. And of course, here in Texas, Lost Mabel's Texas Parks and Wildlife will keep you up to date on that one and those changes as well. I know Justin has been out there. You've been out there, haven't you? Or have you? You've been out to Lost Mabel's? Justin has. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> it is. Good, good talk, Justin. <laughs> I'm just saying. Once again, the fall excitement has overtaken Justin. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to get you too crazy over there, Justin. All right, I know many of you have been waiting for this one, Justin. A popular K-pop band premiering their new video on a video game known for dance moves. BTS will put their brand new video on the game Fortnite. The song is called Dynamite, and it's the South Korean group's first fully English song. The video actually dropped last month. It set a record as YouTube's most viewed music video. They supposedly have some never before seen choreography. Got, gotta wait and see it before you can judge how good it is. If, if it's not Michael Jackson moonwalking, uh, you know, don't. Either way, get it. your popcorn ready. Yeah. yeah. It's gonna be fun to watch. But it dropped. It dropped. Last month. I threw that in there for you. Just, you know. Thanks. Rather than it premiered last month, it dropped. So hey, hip. finally, get ready for some new emojis. The Unicode Consortium announced it's going to release more than 200 animated figures. They include a bandaged heart and heart surrounded by flames, which can either refer to heartbreak or heartburn. So you got to pay attention to who you send that one. Don't send a <laughs> heartburn one to your chef because right. he might get offended, right? <laughs> There's also three variations of gender, gender neutral character. The bad news is you got to wait like uh, between January and October of next year for the update that's coming. So. You gotta pay attention on these emojis. That's a lot to choose from. Well, yeah. One news, hundred. Uh, yeah. America this morning was saying that'd be just like 2020. Tease us with brand new emojis we can use now and make us wait till next year to 2021. use them. 21. Yeah. Like everything else. Yeah. 21 <laughs> or 22. I just looking forward to 2021. Amen. They want to start off with some new emojis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They'll be ready. Don't all, we two, all? all 200 of them. Calm down, Justin. Okay. Don't celebrate too much this fall thing. He's getting in a zen-like mode for his forecast, yes. which is about to happen. David, thank you thank very you. much at 947 as the camera swings around. Justin is standing by. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be a while before we see fall foliage around here, but it is coming one day. I have a friend who lives up near Alberta, Canada, yep. and the leaves up there have started to turn. Of course, they're at a much further north yes. latitude-wise. Yeah, that's Canada. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it will happen. Usually it takes a little bit longer, and it, it depends on the rain and that sort of thing, but Lost Maples is beautiful if you mm -hmm. want to check it out. Uh, hopefully we will get some nice colors this year. Rainfall. Let's take a look at the radar. It is out there. You see some showers and storms around. Uh, well, this showers really not any storms. We haven't detected any lightning strikes around LaGrange and down towards Gonzales. And I was just looking at Trans Guide along I-10. And this little shower is putting down some pretty good rain right around days of all is when I looked at it. Now it's starting to fall apart a, a bit, but there is a shower moving through town. We've seen a couple more showers out near uh, SeaWorld and then working the, their way south. We're looking at 410 of Fredericksburg right now. I'm looking at that train. has got a little bit of rain falling. So there could be some wet roads for a time. We're not looking for a lot of rain here in San Antonio this morning, uh, but there could be a shower or two. Uh, this is where the heavier rain is right now. Bastrop, Giddings, LaGrange, and then especially as you get out towards Houston. These thunderstorms just keep training over the city of Houston. The numbers coming out are, are pretty impressive. They expected to get some heavy rain from Beta, but probably not like this. Uh, 15 inches estimated by the radar, 17 inches. This is over the last 48 hours, okay? So it's not all at once, but uh, it's still causing a lot of problems. The bayous there are starting to swell, and they're going to have some flooding issues, I'd say, through the day today. So if you're headed east on I-10, be aware there is some serious flooding underway in Houston. Outside for us, we've got uh, cloudy skies, 72 degrees at the airport, 73 Stenson, 72 over there at Randolph. And winds are pretty gusty out of the north northwest at about 14 miles per hour. Still 68 degrees in comfort, 66 at Bernie Stage, cloudy skies for you. And then 74 Del Rio, 76 Pleasanton, 71 right now in Kennedy. Take a look at the wind gusts. So we're gusting to 29 in New Braunfels, gusting to 25 here in town, 21 in Gonzales. The center of that circulation just around Victoria, but still tight enough to where we're feeling some of the effects from Tropical Storm Beta. And yes, it is still a tropical storm. You see some of the clouds. They tried to break up earlier, but we're back in the clouds at the airport uh, here in San Antonio. Now, as you go west, Del Rio, you're in the sun. Eagle Pass, you're in the sun. 
and down along I-35 seeing quite a bit of sun. I think eventually these clouds will clear out, probably taking until tomorrow before that happens. But you can see beta very nicely here on the visible satellite picture. Winds right now at 40 miles per hour, so still a tropical storm gusting to 50. It's going to linger a little bit today along the Texas coast and then eventually get a kick and it will move north and east away from us. And then by tomorrow afternoon, that's when we should start to see some clearing. We can see that with the future cast here. It shows a little bit today and then the clouds fill back in tomorrow morning. It may take some time before those go away and then eventually some pretty good clearing tomorrow. And then by Thursday, we'll be looking at full sun. 30% chance of some showers mainly off to the east of San Antonio today. Temperatures up around 80 for a high. Northeast Julie winds 10 to 15 and gusty. They'll stay gusty through tonight. 84 degrees tomorrow, partly cloudy. 87 on Thursday, 90 though Friday. Mostly sunny Saturday and Sunday. We've got a little disturbance rolling through over the weekend, but just not enough moisture to do anything. So it's just hot and mostly sunny. That's it. We'll enjoy no today. Fall. <laughs> no fall. <laughs> no. <laughs> we'll enjoy today's temps then. Yep. Thank you, Justin. Yep. It's exactly 951, 72 degrees. We'll be right back. Well, tomorrow on GMSA and I, Katie Blake will be doing her science lab experiment. If your kids would like to take part in our egg drop challenge, here's what she'll need. An egg, a plastic cup, a plastic tray or plate, toilet paper, just the roll, you know, the cardboard part. Have that all handy for tomorrow's uh, Katie Science Lab. Let's check trans, trans guide real quick. Looking at I-37 and Houston, not too many problems there. 410 and Bandera, and earlier we were talking about uh, truck rolled over at southbound 410 and WW White Road, so you might want to be aware of that one. Justin? And right now we're sitting at 73 degrees, up around 80 today with uh, breezy winds. A couple of showers here, but mostly um, most of the rain's going to be off to our east. Still some heavy rain out near Houston this morning. Okay. okay. All right, let's head to this. An unidentified couple planning to get married apparently sent an RSVP that demanded to know the value of the gift they would be receiving so they could provide meal options accordingly. So a snapshot of the RSVP was recently shared to Reddit's wedding shaming forum showing that the future spouses created a four tiered system of dinner choices offering generous guests the best grub. All right. There so here's go. the menu for a loving gift of up to $200. You may choose from the roast chicken or swordfish. <laughs> the silver gift with between $251 and $500, you get the sliced steak or the poached salmon. Golden gift, that's $501 to $1,000. You get the above choices or filet mignon and lobster tails. And of course, if you see there, the platinum gift with is over $1,000. You what? get that two pound lobster plus a Jeez. souvenir champagne. That is awesome. Now, if you wanted to eat <laughs> vegetarian or kosher at this wedding, that's automatically set at the platinum gift level. So that would be over $1,000 or $1,000 to over $2,500. Now, there was a question about whether this was legit part of a wedding or not. They said the favor of your reply is requested, blah, blah, blah. The favor, F-O-V-O-U-R, typically favors how that's spelled in the UK and Canada. So we're still not sure if this is legit RSVP. Yeah, I don't know. I like this one quote saying, my response would be zero and I'll bring McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> According to this person. Have a great day, guys.